The Sakwa mission is to promote the art quilt. One way they do that is through exhibitions and our Toronto team has taken this mission to heart. When Toronto, one of the most diverse cities in the world, was chosen as the location for this year's conference, that team decided to go beyond a regional exhibit and include all of Canada. I want you to think about that. A regional call for art quilts going out to almost 4 million square miles. That speaks resoundingly of the theme of the show and conference, diversity and inclusion. I'm unbelievably sad that we don't get to see these in person. God, I got choked up. I'm equally grateful that we're able to give you a glimpse of this glorious work. Our thanks go out again and again to, to the Toronto team who put this exhibit together and specifically the Canadian Regional Juried Exhibition Committee. Please enjoy Color with a U. Hi, I'm Tracy Locko. I'm a juried artist member of SACWA, and I have the pleasure of chairing a wonderful committee that has organized SACWA's first all-Canadian regional juried exhibition of art quilts, called Colour with a U. I'd like to thank committee members Michaela Fitzsimmons, Greta Hildebrand, Regina Marslin, Judy Martin, Margaret Martin, Susan Selby, and Aria Spielman for their enthusiastic participation. To give you an idea of what's ahead, I'm going to provide an overview of the exhibition while we show some installation shots. First of Color with a U, then of Color with a U2, and I'll be back with you at the end. We'll also show each artwork individually, and our committee member, Arya Spielman, will read each artist statement. Just a quick word on the installation photos. These are not professional photographs. They were taken while the exhibitions were being installed and we had to shoot around work tables, tools and whatnot. Also, the curators have made some adjustments after these photos were taken. As the galleries have now closed due to COVID-19, we were not able to return. Nonetheless, we hope these images give you a sense of these two wonderful exhibitions. So where did the title come from? The title resulted from early brainstorming sessions. It became clear that the values of diversity and inclusion were seen as an important part of being Canadian, and so that became our theme. We Spell Colour with a U was one of the brainstorm ideas that seemed to embody this concept. Our call for entry described the theme this way. In Canada, we spell colour with a U. We also spell labor, favorite, honor, and neighbor with a U. That U could stand for unique, unforgettable, universal, unity, understanding, utopia. It could include the unusual, unexpected, unbound, unabashed, unaccounted, uncanny. We care about the U, it makes us unique. We care about the U, spelled Y-O-U, it brings us together. What do the Canadian values of diversity and inclusion mean to you? How does your labor in your favorite medium honor your neighborhood, your community? How do you color yourself into our Canadian culture? We are looking for artwork that expresses these ideas and that together will give an insightful perspective on our Canadian cultural identity. We encourage work of all types, including representational, abstract, and social commentary in 2D and 3D. Our three jurors, Faith Heiblinger, Alan Sillyboy, and Jane Willoughby, are from each of the three Canadian SACWA regions. Juror Faith Heiblinger from Cambridge, Ontario, is the former executive curator of Homer Watson House and Gallery. She was lead juror and guest curated the installation of Colour with a U. Her curatorial focus ranges from early 20th century artists, such as Homer Watson, to current Canadian artists. Juror Alan Sillyboy, 
an indigenous artist and graduate of Nova Scotia College of Art and Design, is from Millbrook, Nova Scotia. Ellen looks to the indigenous Mi'kmaq petroglyph tradition for inspiration and develops his own artistic vocabulary out of those forms. Juror Jane Willoughby from Edmonton, Alberta, is a juried artist member of SACWA. She has an extensive, award-winning international exhibition history of textiles and mixed-media collage. Her artworks have been included in several SACWA global exhibitions and are in many publications and collections. Our opening locations are Homer Watson House and Gallery and Riverbrink Art Museum. Both are historic houses, and the really fun thing is that the original owners knew each other. Homer Watson House and Gallery is the former home of Homer Watson, Canada's first internationally recognized landscape artist. After receiving one of Homer's paintings as a gift, Queen Victoria then commissioned two more pieces for the Windsor Castle collection, where they are displayed today. The gallery was established soon after with the funds from that sale, making it one of the oldest continuously operating galleries in Canada. Riverbrink is the former country home of London, Ontario lawyer Samuel Weir, an avid collector of fine and decorative arts, rare books, and historical documents. The collection includes works by many well-known Canadian, American, and European artists, including Homer Watson. We had a record response to the call for entry with 173 works submitted for review by our jurors. 35 works were selected for Color with a U, opening at Homer Watson House and Gallery, and another nine works were selected for Color with a U, too, at Riverbrink Art Museum. For these two exhibitions, 44 artists have reflected on the theme of diversity and inclusion to give colorful representations of our Canadian cultural identity. Each offers an individual perspective on how we as Canadians see ourselves in our social, historical, and physical landscape. I'll now pass the microphone to Aria Spielman, who will tell you about each of the works in Color with a U. Shirts by Susan Avishai. I take enormous pride living in a country that welcomes immigrants and asylum seekers, where diversity is seen as a strength. One unforgettable visual memory was Justin Trudeau handing out winter coats and woolen hats to deplaning Syrian families saying, welcome home. The metaphor of my work is exactly this stance of compassion and appreciation for fresh chance. Shirts is art made from clothing we cast off, but it embodies respect for past history, for dignity maintained through change, for origin stories not lost. When we do not abandon the reasons why transformation must take place, we are closer to understanding how to preserve the good. This piece was made by cutting, sewing, and quilting. Deconstructed men's dress shirts, buttons, and thread were used in its creation. Garden on the Hill 
by Hélène Blanchet. I am a Canadian gardener. I live in a vast and astoundingly beautiful landscape, and like all gardeners, I am determined to tame it, no matter what the land throws at me. The season is short, the soil is acidic, the winds are fierce, but I plod on, determined to the end to make my mark. Such is the Canadian gardener. This is a picture of me going off to work in my garden, hoping against all odds that the deer haven't had too big a breakfast this morning. This piece uses quilting, embroidery, beading, applique, and coloring. Cotton, embroidery floss, glass beads, ink tense pencils have been used in its creation. The Urgent Colors of a Summer Garden by Wilma Brock The bright blossoms of summer are fleeting and urgent, demanding attention with all their vibrant rainbow of colors. All colors are welcomed and valued in my garden, as in my country, Canada. This variety brings such joy, enriching our lives. This piece was made with curved piecing, fabric paper fusion, hand dyeing fabric, free motion machine stitching, improvisational wonky log cabin construction, carving and stamping, all piecing and quilting was done on a home machine. Mixed media with fabric paper fusion and cotton fabric, fabric paint and various threads were used in its creation. Thoughts 2 by Linda Campbell Our brains receive a million bits of information each second. Our mind filters out all but 50 bits. Half of these bits go to the conscious mind. The other half are stored in the unconscious mind. Thoughts 2 contains over a hundred bits of information which represents about two seconds of thought. We are all affected by what goes on around us. This piece turns and moves with the air currents when you walk past it. Our life experiences are stored in our minds and create filters through which we see the world around us. We are all unique individuals interacting in a world full of immense diversity. This piece was created with cut up aluminum cans. The aluminum was annealed with a torch, drilled, carved, painted with alcohol inks, varnished, stitched to sari silk with clear buttons on the back, hung from the driftwood. Upcycled aluminum, upcycled sari silk, alcohol inks, buttons, spray varnish, various yarns, crochet cotton, clear buttons, driftwood, silicone, swivel wrapped wire were all used in its creation. Anticipatory Grief by Victoria Carley Because of our world's uncertain future, anxiety colors all our lives. Looking forward to sad events, personal and global, can lead to the condition known as anticipatory grief. If this is a mood, what color is it? Human nature is, foolishly, to always look for glimmers of hope, rays of sunshine. In the depths of mourning, People console the bereft by telling them to remember the happy memories that add color and brightness to their black mood. In my depiction of anticipatory grief, the color of bruises glowers over a flow of gray sadness, all of which is punctuated with moments of color and lightness. This piece is made of mixed upholstery and fashion fabrics, machine sewn and hand embroidered. Upholstery and fashion fabrics and embroidery floss have been used in its creation. Rue de Buade, number two, by Heather de Bray. I have imposed my own invented palette on this scene of an historic neighborhood in Quebec City, 
to better press its lively animated quality. Declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site, the Old Town is considered to be the cradle of the French civilization in America. This piece is fused applique with machine stitching. Hand dyed cotton and cotton thread were used in its creation. Latitude and Attitude by Christy Ferrier Placing an importance on inclusion and celebrating diversity is fundamental for a just society. In Canada, we get it right sometimes. I wonder why, and think it must be about a little latitude and a whole lot of attitude. This piece is made with free motion, machine stitching, and fabric painting. Cotton fabric and batting, thread and dyes were used in its creation. Thirty-six Million Stories, The Fabric of Us by Linda Finley We are a country of immigrants. Even our indigenous peoples in the distant past were once newcomers. Together we make a nation, sometimes imperfect but we have the choice to steer our own course, if only we will. A small patchwork quilt is embellished with fabric, sculptural elements, and framed. Cotton and other textiles, polyester stuffing, foam core backing, various fabric-friendly paint and drawing mediums, wool roving, polymer clay were used in its creation. Beneficial Symbiosis by Ihor Gaudan My interpretation of our evolutionary path from early beginnings, four billion years ago, to the present day and beyond. Overwhelming global evidence defines this as the Anthropocene era, our devastating impact on the Earth. This is evident in the pollution of our rivers and waterways, flooding and the forest fires in the West. And we end this story with a feeble attempt to solve our problems by exporting our so-called good intentions to other planets. This work was machine pieced, raw and turned edge applique, long arm machined quilted. Cotton fabric with wool batting was used in its creation. Color Series by Mita Giacomini our Canada goose is white, grey and black, in other words, all the colours. This piece is from a series of portraits that contemplate subjects as individuals rather than types or species. It shifts attention from identifying what this individual is or who, and invites reflection on what we are doing here together now. This was made by surface weaving, free motion quilting. Primarily silk, wool, cotton and other natural and synthetic fibers, hand and commercially dyed or painted yarns, strings, threads and cut textiles were used in its creation. The Eccentric Pianist by Victoria Gray Canada has produced some very colourful characters, one of them being renowned pianist Glenn Gould, who became famous for his interpretations of classical music, particularly the works of J.S. Bach. But as much as this, he is remembered for his multifarious work including electronic media and radio documentaries, and for his eccentricities such as hypochondria and wearing an overcoat and gloves whenever he played. It takes all types to make a country, a world. This work was made using hand needle turned applique, raw edge applique, satin stitched machine applique, fusing, paper piecing, machine piecing, machine quilting commercial cotton, silk dupioni, knitted gloves, silk batting, was used in its creation. 
We the People of Staghorn and PG by Greta Hildebrand. We the People of Staghorn and PG features two quilts layered five inches apart to create a window into our land and culture through native staghorn sumac and cultivated PG hydrangea. Canada comes from the Huron name Kanata, meaning settlement. We the people are the indigenous and the settlers. Together we exist through time and space, our roots and limbs interwoven in color and form. Part A depicts the native staghorn sumac in its autumnal brilliance, overlaid with the winter stems of PG hydrangea, a propagation found in the urban landscape. The top quilt invites a peek beneath through its cutaway windows to the beauty of the indigenous. Both plants offer us their healing medicinal properties. This piece was made with digital photography printed on quilting cotton with cut work to expose the under layer. Silk fiber fusion backs the top layer, hand quilted and finished with hand and machine stitching. Quilting cotton, cotton quilt backing, silk fiber fusion backing top layer, and quilting thread was used in its creation. Ribs and Heart by June Horwich. When we protect that which is precious to us, we end up building walls and fences, some of which are deceivingly beautiful. This keeps our valuables in and other people out. Does this action improve our chances of survival or keep others from helping us when we have trouble? This piece was made by fabric dyeing, free motion machine quilting, slice and reform sculpting, machine and hand sewn assembly, yarn wrapping, hand dyed and batik cotton, pellon interfacing, Synthetic yarns and thread were used in its creation. Colorful Canadians by Margaret Jessup. Canadians come in all colors, and immigrants bring colors to Canada. All Canadians add to the color and flavor of Canada. This piece was made with quilting, cotton, polyester, plastic, coat hanger, wood frame were all used in its creation. Color in Transit by Joan Kilpatrick Crowded and crumpled in the Toronto subway, I am immersed in our diverse Canadian community. People have roots around the world and now travel together. In my imagination, each person is vividly colored by the layers of their unique personal experiences, aspirations, and burdens. In these collage sketches, the richness of fiber art expresses the complexity of the characters. Their lives, like the images of their faces, are pieced, stitched, woven, and fused together. These images suggest age, gender expression, culture and disability. Background stitching illustrates the way that people animate the space around them. Each person is on a journey towards living in full color. Machine stitching on dissolving stabilizer, machine piecing, quilting, free motion stitching, photo manipulation transfer to fabric, partial felting, ribbon weaving, fusible applique. Cotton, synthetic thread, yarn, cotton, linen, silk fabrics, synthetic net, wool roving, fusible web, cotton batting, synthetic ribbons, inkjet printing, and ink were all used in its creation. United Diversity by Chris Lizak. What makes a Canadian? Almost everyone has roots in other countries. With rich traditions and vibrant cultures blending, we build neighborhoods, communities, and the country itself. 
Although the roots seem separate, they feed one solid iconic Canadian culture, uniquely individual, yet growing and evolving in health, strength and support. With acceptance and unity, we all flourish and proudly wear the colors of citizenship. This piece was made with wet felting, Nuno felting, armatures, stitching, soft sculpture, dressmaking design, paper mache, wool, vintage silk saris, silk fiber, wire and paper were used in its creation. Kill Your Darlings Number 2 by Fuzzy Mall. This work is comprised of portraits from my series, Hashtag Faces of Hamilton. The initial project consisted of 25 portraits of strangers that I met as I got to know my new environment. Each person nominated the next, creating a chain of influential people who became aware of each other through their participation in this common experience. The portraits are no longer a, of a single person because no person is singular in form. We all consist of shared culture and experiences that influence our behavior. This piece was raw edge applique, mostly reclaimed materials from thrift stores, thread and felt were used in its creation. Same, different, homage to Yalensky by Regina Marslin. Inspired by the colorful U-shaped portrait of the Russian painter Alexei von Yalensky, the way he painted portraits in a very formal, stylized and abstract way spoke to me because in spite of the reduction to the most basic common features of a human face, we can see so many differences between them and each head has its own character. The shared human basics can be found in all of us as we look closely. This piece was raw edge applique, painted and machine quilted. Hand dyed and commercial cotton, oil paint stick and fabric markers were used in its creation. Peggy by Mary Powell. Canada's best-known author, poet, activist, and feminist icon, Margaret Atwood, fondly known as Peggy, is a Canadian treasure, having won numerous literary awards and dozens of honorary doctorates. Colour features prominently in her recent works. In her 1985 novel, The Handmaid's Tale, a frighteningly prescient story, about a near-future America ruled by a totalitarian regime, she selected a dark red for the handmaid's robes, which have become the symbol of oppression, regularly worn by groups protesting the erosion of women's rights. In her 2019 novel, The Testaments, the spring green of the robes of the teenage brides, a hue she has suggested evokes hope, is also a color of the eco movement. Adapted from a photo by Liam Sharp, hand dyed cheesecloth sculpted with PVA adhesive, machine stitched with monofilament thread to hand painted cotton canvas, soft mounted on felt. Hand dyed cheesecloth, hand painted cotton canvas, monofilament and polyester threads and felt were used in its creation. Scatterlings by Michal Perlman. Urban sprawl promotes suburban development which is mostly uniform in color, form and size. My intention with this piece is to celebrate the uniqueness and diversity of every home and the threads that connect them. As individuals get to know one another and discover common interests, they learn to respect difference and build safe, healthy neighborhoods. This piece was sewn and machine quilted. Commercial and hand dyed mixed fabrics were used in its creation.
A Utopian Sky by Don Piasta. I immigrated to Canada in 1987. I have since become a proud citizen of this fine country. I celebrate the utopian majesty of the northern lights that welcomed me and keep me grounded. I honor my first Canadian friend. Every September Angie took me cranberry picking along the river that bordered her farm. I have had to say farewell to my beautiful friend, but memories of picking the glorious bounty calms my soul. Made with raw and turned edge applique using the appliquick technique, hand embroidery, freehand machine stitching. Recycled sari and homespun cotton fabrics, metallized polyester thread, cotton thread and embroidery floss, cotton batting were all used in its creation. Psychedelic Skies 4 by June Robertson Canada is often referred to as a cultural mosaic. We celebrate diversity and work hard to be inclusive and welcoming to newcomers. That often means opening up our minds to new, hitherto unknown experiences and ideas. At the same time, we are experiencing changes to our climate and here too we are having to adapt to change. Psychedelic Skies is a colorful look at how our skies might look if we look beyond what we know and prepare for the unexpected. We can all share in a dream of seeing the Northern Lights. Different cultural groups have legends associated with such phenomenon. As we share our backgrounds and beliefs, we become more united as a nation and a richer culture overall. Personal photographs blended and manipulated in Photoshop and printed onto cotton fabric by a commercial printer, free motion quilted with a wide variety of threads. Cotton fabric custom printed commercially with an original image, 40 different threads, silk, rayon, cotton and polyester in a variety of colors, solid and variegated were used in its creation. Sassafras Mandala by Lorraine Roy. The sassafras is a native Ontario tree that is host to the rare spice bush swallowtail butterfly. In this piece, I honor the caterpillar, which is so often left out of the equation, even though it is every bit as important as the adult butterfly. In fact, we need to realign our definition of beauty to accept the importance of holy leaves on our garden plants because it means that when the larvae are fed, the adult butterflies can grace our gardens. Caterpillars are also the most important source of protein for growing baby birds. When we respect our insects and give them space in our hearts, we also help nature fulfill all its crucial cycles. This piece was made with machine raw edge applique, machine embroidery, and machine quilting. Cotton and synthetic fabrics and threads and acrylic paint were used in its creation. A Simple Twist of Fate by Helena Sheffer Working with color and texture is what drives my creative process. To create my art, I sift through piles of fabric that act as my palette, carefully snipping off just the right piece. I dye and paint many of the fabrics, reveling in the serendipity of creating never-to-be-repeated hues and patterns on vintage textiles. The intricate machine stitching adds another layer of complexity. This is one of my most multi-hued works in which countless colors come together to create a harmonious whole, just as people from different backgrounds come together to make our country such a wonderful place to live. This piece was fabric collaged, machine and hand stitched. Artist dyed and commercial cotton, silk, synthetic fabrics, tool, and acrylic painted canvas were used in its creation. Portraits Women I Would Like to Have Met 
by Janet Scruggs. These six women were unique historical contributors to arts culture in Canada. Esther Hill, first female registered architect and award-winning weaver. Portia White, first internationally acclaimed black Canadian concert singer. Lucy Maud Montgomery, author of Anne of Green Gables, a best-selling book worldwide. Mary Augusta Heister Reed, first Canadian woman to have a solo art exhibit and work in the National Gallery of Canada. Mary Pickford, first Canadian woman to win an Oscar, co-founder of United Artists Studio. E. Pauline Johnson, first Canadian woman, author, and Aboriginal Canadian to be commemorated on a stamp. This piece uses photos from the public domain, paper lamination onto cheesecloth, hand embroidery. Hand dyed and other cotton fabric, felt, cheesecloth, embroidery threads, matte medium and varnish were used in its creation. Oh, What a Night by Rosalind Sims. This winter scene with a silhouetted polar bear and the bright colors of the aurora borealis speak of color with a U in Canada. After living in the Northwest Territories for 20 years, I am still infatuated with the Northern Lights. Can't you just imagine a polar bear standing in awe of such beauty? This piece was made with wet felting, needle felting by hand and embellisher, applique, thread painting, raw edge stitching, free motion quilting with a variety of stitches to add texture, beading and facing for structure. Merino, rambulet wool bat, fine merino roving, wool cloth, wool polyester cloth, cotton threads and glass beads were used in its creation. Our Home on Native Land by Anne Solomon. Canada, especially Toronto, is known as one of the most diverse countries in the world. This is one of the reasons I love Canada. But we forget that as well as immigrants from all over the world who chose Canada, there are over 600 First Nation communities in Canada representing more than 50 nations. The red maple leaves represent the diversity of Canada crowding out the Indigenous nations. I embroidered a part of the Truth and Reconciliation Statements and my apology for the treatment of Canada's Indigenous peoples. This piece was free motion embroidered, appliqued and quilted. Various cottons were used in its creation. Country by Arya Spielman. As an introvert, it is tempting to isolate myself from others. Through my experience on backcountry canoe trips, I have learned that we need others and others need us. This piece reminds me that we cannot survive well as lone trees. We need the unique and diverse qualities and personalities of family members and friends to help us navigate life give us hope and add meaning to our lives. The background was paper pieced while the tree was raw edge appliqued on top. It was free motion quilted then stretched and framed. Commercial fabric, yarn and thread were used in its creation. The Here and Elsewhere Bee by Andrea Sang Jackson. The Here and Elsewhere Bee compiles 1197 immigration stories. The project is a collaborative quilt inspired by the children's storybook Selena and the Bear Paw Quilt by American-born writer Barbara Smucker. Each block was completed by a visitor to the Canadian Museum of Immigration, representing a bit of each visitor's immigration narrative. The blocks are grouped by thematic trees family, love, freedom and diversity, cultural references, hopes and dreams, nature, agriculture and work, 
and oceanic journeys. The quilt's overall organization illustrates that although each of our stories are unique, there are strong threads that tie them together. This piece uses raw edge applique, improvisational piecing, Sherry Lund contract quilting, cotton, cotton thread, fusible web, polyester thread, and cotton batting were used in its creation. Othello Tunnels by Linda Van Gastel. The Kettle Valley Railway was built in 1910 to 1916 to connect the West Coast to the Kootenay region of British Columbia. The five closely spaced Othello tunnels were the most challenging part of the new railway line. This work is based on a photo taken by James Crookall circa 1925. In Canada's early years, railways formed critical connections, enabling Canada to welcome and support immigrants willing to settle in widespread communities. Inclusion has always been a key element in Canadian culture, as has the commitment to maintain cross-country connections. This work was pieced collage, free motion quilted. Cotton fabric, polyester thread were used in its creation. Light My Fire by Maggie Vanderweight. Sometimes we're hot, sometimes we're cool, not just with the weather. I've used complementary colors to express how contrasting personalities, sensibilities, cultures and emotions can melt together to tell a complementary story. I love how contrasting experiences and lifestyles can create community, connection and passion. In fact, we need the differences to build good fires. In a larger sense, Canada's cultural mosaic has been made by integrating and combining other people's complementary worlds over time. We are so fortunate to live here. This piece was made with hand dyed cotton, machine pieced and long arm quilted. Political Stripes by Judy Villette. This set of four barcode-like pieces was started just prior to the 2016 federal election. Excitement was high. The five official colors are mostly strong, pure hues, with the exception of the PQ's delicate blue tint. As I teach and love color theory, I show how different the colors look on black and white backgrounds and how they make another color when they overlap or form a coalition. Some blends result in gray neutral. Let us hope that Canada does not become a gray neutral nation with no differences between parties. Vive la différence. This work was machine pieced and machine quilted. Tri-Color Red by Kit Vincent. I work with multiple strips of fabric that butt together and create an overall pattern across several panels. Top layers work with underlying shapes to create a visual dance that feeds neighboring panels. When I first pulled out my sewing machine, the art versus craft debate was in full swing. Technology and multiculturalism have since ushered in a whole new palette of artistic options and resources for textile artists. We see shows today where works by artists trained in fine arts are shown alongside work by fine artists using materials normally associated with crafts. I relish being part of this diverse exploration. This piece was hand dyed, discharged, machine drawn, and machine quilted. Hand dyed cottons and silks and some commercial fabrics were used in its creation. The Hockey Boys by Valerie Wilson. Hockey is a national sport that is a symbol of Canada. It acts as a unifying force to connect communities and diverse groups of people. Anyone can play hockey and enjoy the game. 
Here are three boys who came together to join forces and play their favorite sport. I can imagine them out on an icy pond or in their local ice rink skating around. This piece was based on a vintage black and white photograph. This work was made with raw edge fusible applique, colored pencil, and machine quilted. Commercial and hand dyed cottons, tool, and cotton batting were used in its creation. Pow Wow Power by Krista Zagers. The Pow Wow is an opportunity for Indigenous people to celebrate good fortune as a family, society, clan, or tribe. It is a social and cultural gathering where Mother Earth's powerful heartbeat drums cultural identity, diversity, and inclusion into Canadians of all backgrounds. Each feather on ceremonial regalia represents an honor or incident of bravery. Which opportunity or reconciliation will you choose to empower our future identity and culture? This work is adapted from photographs of a powwow by Megan Yonk with permission from the photographer and Swan Lake First Nation. It is hand-painted images on cotton, bojaji piecing of sheer materials with felled seams, random piecing with burlap, domestic free motion stitching, hand stitching, bead and feather embellishments. Cotton, burlap, sheer fabrics, Sukaniko inks, feathers and beads have been used in its creation. So why are there two exhibitions? That's a bit of serendipity. One of our committee members had good contacts with the curator of Riverbrink, who was interested in the exhibit. However, Riverbrink is a much smaller facility and wouldn't be able to exhibit the full Color with a U show. So our clever committee thought, why not have an additional smaller exhibition chosen from the same entries that could travel to smaller venues? So there we are. Our juror for Color with a U2 is Dr. Deborah Antonsik, director of Riverbrink Art Museum. She is a curator and art historian whose research focuses on post-war Canadian art and cultural policy. She is also an instructor at Brock University's Department of Visual Art. Now I'll pass the microphone back to Aria to tell you about each of the art quilts in Color with a U2. Invaders by Ilsa Agnesas Salkowskis. The inspiration for Invaders came from my daughter's vegetable garden. One summer, her husband saw the weeds overtaking her vegetable seedlings, and he decided to be helpful by spraying the weeds with an herbicide. This not only made the weeds shrivel, turn brown and die, but also killed the vegetables growing near them. The end result was that nothing grew there all summer long, yet in the end this saved my daughter a lot of hard gardening work. My artwork is meant to sound a warning about the effects of herbicides on our environment. This piece was machine quilted and embellished, machine and hand appliqued, hand dyed cotton fabrics and paper synthetic fabrics and threads were used in its creation. Through My Eyes by Michelle Cragen. Traveling on the Canadian prairies, going from one destination to another, gives one a view of the varied and colorful landscape. The land can appear flat and you can see for a long distance with nothing to block your view. But there will also be rolling hills and a stand of trees. What you see from spring until winter is a landscape of browns, yellow golds, and greens. The sky too will often be a display of color with pinks and oranges. Prairie colors are spectacular. The hope is that this piece will give the viewer a sense of what the artist sees. This work is machine pieced, hand stitched, and free motion quilted. 
commercial and hand-dyed cottons, embroidery floss, and cotton thread were used in its creation. October Morning by Millie Cumming Seen while canoeing in Muskoka on a crisp October morning, the trees have started to dress in their autumn apparel. This work was hand appliqued, machine pieced, and machine quilted. Commercial, recycled, and ethnic cotton and linen were used in its creation. Cold Magic by Janet Harper As a child, new to Canada, I was amazed when I went outside one night after it had snowed and looked up at the northern lights. The silent curtains of light in the cold winter air, partly obscuring the stars, were a form of magic. Most of the time, they were bright green, yellow, but sometimes there were hints of pinks and blues. Somehow, when I learned that these colors were the result of the interaction between the magnetosphere and the sun, they were even more magic. These colored curtains made me want to explore the universe. This piece was raw edge appliqued and thread painted. Quilting cottons, shears, and thread were used in its creation. Colors on the Rock by Karen Johnson the colors of the houses in St. John's, Newfoundland offer a wonderful contrast to the rocks, sky, and sea. What a wonderful celebration of color. This work was machine pieced, raw edge appliqued, and machine quilted. Hand dyed cotton, recycled scraps from assorted fabrics were used in its creation. Different But the Same by Linda Mariani. Using the same group of fabrics, I created each section in a unique way and combined them with beads to form a unified piece. In the same way, individuals are made of the same components, but all unique in their personalities, appearance, and diversity of their cultural backgrounds, yet they come together to form a harmonious and unified community. This piece was raw edge appliqued, embellished with hand embroidery, and joined by beads and wire. Cotton fabric pieces are laid down with raw edges exposed to form units. Tout en monde to make a nation by Julie Poirier Mateur. Ça prend tout sort de monde pour faire un monde. I was taken aback by the political discourse in Quebec during the spring 2019. The protests in Montreal reinforced my conviction that it takes all sorts of people to make a nation. My quilt is an interpretation of a photo by John Kenny published online by the Montreal Gazette, used with permission. This work was pieced, fused appliqued, tied, knit, walking foot and free motion quilted. Cotton, silk, wool and acrylic yarns, wire, fusible webbing, cotton thread, monofilament were used in its creation. Green to Make My Heart Sing by Susan Selby Canadians on the prairies live in a climate dominated by winter, at least five months. It is followed by six to eight weeks of post-equinox sunshine to melt snow and ice, thaw the earth, and warm the soil. Then there is a generous explosion of green as the trees leaf out. It is this bright translucent green that makes my heart sing. This piece was snow dyed, over dyed, low immersion dyed, painted, raw edge appliqued, painted sheer overlay, free motion stitched on a domestic machine. Damask tablecloth, clothing, drapery sheer, 
wool blanket, bed sheet, cotton fabric, silk scraps, cheesecloth, dye, fabric paint, acrylic paint, and thread were all used in its creation. The Dancer by Catherine Ugrin In the dead of a Manitoban winter, the ground is covered in a frosty blanket of snow. A tree stands alone and comes alive. The frost falls away as her limbs arch gracefully. Dead twigs and branches stitch together to create the illusion of a delicate skirt effortlessly floating. Hovering with the movement imagined, we gaze onto Mother Nature's dancer. Resilience, unity, creativity and strength are the unique qualities required to live in one of Canada's northern climate cities. We understand and embrace our abounding and unabashed love of what some may call the Canadian spirit. Thread drawing with water soluble stabilizer, machine applique, trapunto and thread painting. Cotton and batik fabric, cotton polyester and wool batting, cotton and rayon thread, water soluble stabilizer were all used in its creation. Color with a U will be at Homer Watson until May 31st. It will then travel to St. Francis Xavier University Art Gallery in Antigonish, Nova Scotia for July 2nd to September 19th, 2020. And then on to Inverness County Center for the Arts in Cape Breton for October 6th to November 1st, 2020. Color with a U2 will be at Riverbrink until September 5th. Then it will travel to Signal Hill Art Center in Weyburn, Saskatchewan for September 18th to October 31st, 2020. Contracts for other locations are in the works and will be announced soon. Each exhibition will travel independently across Canada for three years and we hope you will be able to see them at one of these locations in person. I know many of you are eager to purchase our beautiful 64-page catalog that includes a full page for each artist plus juror essays. We have some logistics to work out regarding shipments in Canada, the U.S. and international, payments in Canadian or U.S. dollars, and so on. Please bear with us, and we will have an announcement soon. Thank you, and we hope you've enjoyed the tour.